Okay, well, back in the days, it was an um, a, 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 a open mic spot called The Good Life Cafe way in the early 90s. Basically, it was like the, uh, um, the L.A. version of Showtime at the Apollo. It was a whole lot of different type of cats going up in that motherfucker or whatever. But um, basically, from being around those dudes, this uh, cats called Freestyle Fellowship and Volume 10 and these all these underground hip-hop acts, my shit came from that. You know, you know what I mean? I was influenced by a lot of the stuff that was going on at that time, and they was on that rapid-fire type of delivery or whatnot. And then I just took it and then de it developed into what it is now. When did you start taking it serious to where you were recording songs and making videos for them? All right, back in, um, in, in 1998, me, my brother, and one of my homies, we had a, uh, a deal with a group called um, Afterlife Records, which was just a bunch of niggas sitting around. You know, the white dude, Bob Ezrin, and, all that, and another dude named Dave Salzman, he fucked with the, um, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air TV series. He slid them dudes 250,000. So with that, he was like, here, yeah, do something with that. Put your music out. But they fucked it off, you know what I mean, whatever. And then uh, after, shortly after that, I was um, on a sound, the Soul Plane soundtrack and shit, or I have a um, song placed in one of the scenes on the movie. So with that, those two things happening, I was saying to myself, well, shit, with that little bit of change, a motherfucker could probably go further, you know what I mean? My, nigga might as well just go ahead and pursue that shit, and I'm good at it, so fuck it. You know what I mean? What are the challenges as an independent artist? How hard is it? It seems like, to me, it's really about, um, if you ain't really got a stupid amount of money to just buy, to um, throw around and get different people to feature on your shit and all that type of shit, or if you don't know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, it's kind of hard to get in. A lot of people be a lot of artists that I ran into or that I grew up listening to, I ran into, and you know I've done shows with or whatnot and stuff, things of that nature. But it seemed like they everybody's every man for himself. They don't really know you. They ain't fucking with you unless you can grease their palm and pay them to get on some shit or something like that. But other than that, it seemed like it's every man for himself. Ain't nobody just giving nobody no handouts like that. So that's the hard part as far as getting in, in my opinion. You know what I mean? But all, all through the years of, um, of trying to do this shit, I developed a bit of a fan base myself, and I'm getting a, a little bit of change off of it. It might not be as much as other people are doing, but I'm making a, a small amount of change off that shit. But it, but it could be a hell of a lot more. You know, I wouldn't mind being backed by a major label. Shit, a motherfucker be a damn fool not to, you know what I mean? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey. Once turned on, it's hard to turn off. Sometimes it's best to turn the other chick instead of getting your whole head blown off. Dead in the casket with your brain turned off. All cause you wanted to prove to the world that you wasn't soft. What you thought you was gonna win turned out to be a big loss. You're dead now. Baby mama somewhere getting tossed. Like a teenage hood rat from Lock High. Getting fucked on a dirty ass carpet by a party of five. Gang bangers, this here's a no-brainer. Don't ever let your pride put your life in any danger that could be avoided. You had a bright future till you got into it with the wrong nigga and destroyed it. You in the act. So I'm just trying to record a few more songs just so I can have a, 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 like at least a, a, a 19 track album of all bangers. And then I, when I get that, I'm going to pick out you know certain on, things and then um, go from there. So, But Facebook is a hell of a tool because you get to meet and network with all type of motherfuckers. And that's how I got it. I reach out to a lot of my, uh, my my following, even though it's small. But Facebook does did a lot of wonders for me. So the, so how does it work? They email you, or you, you go to the website? I might I might just post in my time. Like, hey, I need beats. And motherfuckers just what's your what's your uh what's your email address? And then I give them my email address. Next thing you know, I'm getting all kind of shit, shit from all over the place. So sometimes you get a beat that you fall in love with immediately. And then I just write to that. Sometimes I get a beat that my I'll be like, ah, oh, that shit sound all right. But I write to it anyway. But I'm starting right now. I'm trying to focus on the ones that I fall immediately in love with. So when, when you get a beat from from a lesser known producer online, oh, what does it usually cost? What do they charge you? For? They don't charge me nothing. I'm like, man, you doing me a favor just like I'm doing you a favor. I'm rapping on your shit, <laughs> you let me rap on your shit. So we both doing each other a favor. It's like a mutual, you know. And then if if if, if it becomes a single or something like that, then we just split that shit in half. You know, 50 50. You did, you produced it, I rapped over it, so that's a 50 50 split. You know? So, what kind of advice do you give to young, younger, up and coming people that want to follow in your footsteps and, and do the same type of stuff? As far as music? As far as music. Yeah, man, just do what you, just keep doing what you gotta do. Keep recording, keep doing shows, keep going out, meeting people, keep passing your shit out, try, keep trying to get known. You know, the more people that know who you are and like your shit, the more closer you get to accomplishing the goal you're trying to reach. 
And I'm taking my own advice on that right now, you know what I mean? So yeah, the more people that know who you are, the more closer you might get to accomplishing the goal of trying to get out there, you know what I mean? Because then you might be able to meet somebody that could be like, come on, I'm pulling you in, you know what I mean? And put your shit out there or invest in your shit or whatever. Rap to me is like a form of uh, 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 therapy. Sometimes it might be some shit that bother, that bother you a hell of a lot, but it ain't nothing you can do about it. But once you write about it and then record that shit, it might, that might, just that process might make me feel better about the situation and then I'll move on to something else, you know what I mean? The last show I did was in um, Arizona. Um, I opened up for um, Glasses Malone. It was me, Glasses Malone, and a girl named JN at a strip club out there in um, Arizona. Now, how did you hook up with Glasses Malone? Because that must have been a good look. I do a guy named, uh, this is a guy named, uh, he calls himself Tree Post. He got a little shit called the Tree Post Collective, right? And who, who Tree Post is, basically, he's the, uh, he's like a, a dude, like, say if you're a promoter and you're looking for somebody to book some uh, artist for your, uh, uh, for your club or whatever, he gonna find him. Oh, that motherfucker cut off. Like, he go find him. So basically, somebody went to book Glasses Malone for that shit out there. So he like, all right, pay me this money and let my boy CR get down. And then and I get Glasses Malone for you. So that's how I got hooked up with the shit in Arizona. When I be thinking, sometimes I be thinking about quitting things, like, man, you stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah, you know. Even if I didn't receive encouragement or positive feedback from fans, I would still do it until I felt like I don't want to do it no more. Because that's how strongly I feel about, you know, making it with this shit. If you game banging, you're gonna see game banging shit. You're gonna get, either get beat up, beat people up, shot at, get shot at, drive by, do all that type of shit. Whatever, as a game member that you see, I've seen. That's all, uh, that's all I know, but I don't plan on my dreams for us getting out the hood. And that's what people, that's what people fail to realize. You gotta make, you, you gotta go make it through the hood to get out the hood.